What's going on, y'all? So oh my god what's going on y'all so we are back again for a whole new episode i hope y'all can hear me because i don't feel like putting my headphones in uh but baby bell collective this is season one episode three sisters in the struggle y'all let me just say this i don't know how y'all feeling but i'm actually i didn't I, I'm, I'm gonna be quite honest i was on the fence about this show okay you know, I've never really, like I said before, I never really watched a own reality show outside of Love and Marriage Huntsville. And most of the people on that show, I can't stand, okay? And that's why I don't review it because I know that shit gonna get me 86 hot, okay? And I don't want to get on here always going off on somebody or whatever and just being mad. I want to play with it. I want to have a good time with it. I want to go off a little bit and I want to come back down to a sense, you know what I'm saying? But this show is giving me just the right amount of drama that I need for a little Friday night to stay in the house or whatever. Especially when I got to go to work in the morning or whatever to wind down and to come on here and just talk some little shit, okay? It's giving me just the right amount of drama. It's not too much and not that light. You know what I'm saying? It's not too much, just the right amount. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, let's just get up into this episode. So we're going to talk about Tambra. Tambra Cherie, okay? Let me tell you this. Tambra Cherie... It's a couple of girls on this show, Tampa, Cherie, and Letitia. Baby, we don't know none of y'all business yet, but I know the drama with Letitia is coming because, you know, um, when they showed the little preview or whatever with her and her man and him doing the offshoring thing or whatever he do that he be gone for damn near a whole month and then come back and then they had infidelities and shit, bitch, I'm ready to get into y'all tea, okay? Because Letitia, you be up in everybody business, okay? Trying to be sister girl, girl home girlfriend, you know what I'm saying? But we know you got some little messy tea up in your ass too. But Tambra... I don't know if she got messy tea like that. You know what I'm saying? Because she don't give me messy feels just yet. And it's like she keeping her stuff low key. And you always need that one person that's going to even out all the drama. And I feel like Tambra is that person that's even out all the drama that's happening. Because everybody got a mix of something that's going on. It's Tambra and then Antoinette. Because Antoinette don't really have that much drama. But she got a little taste. You know what I'm saying? With the divorce and, you know, all of that. But... Uh, I do like the fact that all the women are on here trying to build empires and trying to work on their businesses, and they are showing that in the midst of their dramas, okay? So I, I, I dig that. But Tamari, uh, Tamari, Tambra Cherie, every time she get on here, girl, she talking about, you know, the new ventures she got going on and the radio personality that she is. Today episode, she came on there and she went to go visit her parents after her birthday, you know what I'm saying? And they was just giving her all this love and advice and stuff like this. Beautiful couple, okay? First of all, they look a little related. I'm not gonna even gonna sit here and lie, okay? I was like, that's your mama and daddy. They look like brother and sisters, but... You know, that's because, I mean, it is what it is. They a good-looking pa uh, pair of parents, okay? And they've been together for 51 years. I was like, damn, can you imagine being together with somebody that, girl, I don't know. <laughs> I had to debate with myself sometimes, like, because the thing of it is, it's like, I don't want to get married, but then, then maybe I find somebody that probably could change my mind. I don't know if that'll ever happen. But at this moment in time, I don't want to get married. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I do want a relationship that I feel like I want to I wanna see a future with. But it's like, should I? I it's, it's complicated. It's, it's complicated. But bitch, 51 goddamn years, I got to be in love, love with your ass. And you know we're going to be getting on each other's nerves, okay? Girl, it's going to be a mess, okay? But anyway... That's beautiful. And mama and daddy, that's all they want to know is you going to have some grandkids, okay? At least give us one grandbaby. She was like, babe, my mama, I'm working on trying to become a syndicated talk show host or, you know, a radio, this uh personality in the business and all this stuff, Hollywood and all this shit, whatever she want to do. She got goals, okay, in her media field, you know, and... I understand Tambra because I'm trying to get into the business too a little bit, just a little bit, trying to get my feet wet, looking for that right opportunity, somebody to come snatch me up or whatever. But, um, you know, time will tell. So she got her stuff planned out. And she was like, I mean, if you wanted me to get a surrogate, if I could get a surrogate right now and pop them kids up in there, yeah, we'll have a baby in nine months, okay? But I do love the dynamic that we saw with her and her parents and how she's not full of the mess so far, okay? Then we get uh, Antoinette. <laughs> 
we get Antoinette, you know, she going down there to her um dental practice and seeing how it looks and all that stuff or whatever. And, you know, she invited Latrice and Kaylin. I think that's how you say her name, the little white lady. Bitch, let me just tell you this. Girl, somebody's... See, this is what happens when you film on your phone because you get messages that come in and it just throws me off. Okay, now that message just threw me off. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> girl, what the fuck are you talking about? But anyway, no. Kaylin, I hope I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, I apologize. But, you know, her friend come in, she's showing them around about how this look and it's going to be this and it's going to be that. Oh, put your glass office right here. Bitch, I was going to do that. That's what's going to happen. Oh, my God. You know, that's how they was up there doing. Okay, so Antoinette and Latrice, first of all, y'all in the construction site. I don't care if it's almost done, halfway done, still got bit. First of all, Latrice said, I mean, it ain't really got no floors. It ain't really got no walls. But, you you know she doing good i said girl calm it down that was cute little shade or whatever but at the same time they up there talking about the brunch and uh not necessarily brunch but tambra's birthday and shit that uh transpired with that you know how that went the way that it went but then antoinette brought up the fact that you know letitia she was up there trying to be shady to her just giving her all the shade everything and then trying to say that her wig was slipping back and about to fall off and all that shit you know and so they just feeling how they feel about that and then it was like you know people just need to be real and come with it and be real and all that stuff bitch they forgot that kaylin was there and i forgot she was there too okay because all of a sudden kaylin opened up her mouth the first time that we heard her this whole episode bitch and i can't wait till next week okay because her and marie finna get into it her and marie finna get into it and i said damn marie you didn't get into it with just about everybody already okay we only three episodes in okay and you finna get into it with every fucking body bitch the problem is you okay at this point the problem is marie girl i'll get to her in a minute because I see why you keep on picking fights with everybody because your, 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 your home ain't clean, okay? That's what it is, bitch. But anyway, moving on from that, Kaylin opened up her mouth and she was like, so um, what does it mean to be real? <laughs> ah, when she asked it, I looked up like, girl, what? And she was, they was like, you know what, forget. You know, we got to take the sister girl mode off and that. You know, sometimes you got to explain to your white friends, your white counterpart, what so-and-so means. See, I don't ever want to be in that type of situation. And it feels like I be like that sometimes at work with my uh, white boss or whatever. But she be cool. But she literally be wanting to know some stuff. And it don't come off in an offensive way. So, you know, I be fine with, like, you know, talking about this and talking about that. But came in, really, she really wanted to know, what does it mean to be real? Bitch, about your shit. Or some people just be doing that shit to be lying or whatever and all this stuff. So, they got to explain to her what it is and all that stuff. It was a cute little moment. Because mama was really lost, okay? I said, oh, that's cute. Meanwhile, we get into, um, Latish. Letitia, Letitia, you know, she meets up with Tambra. Tambra hooked her up with seeing the councilman who is actually her cousin. Okay. You know, Tambra got a little um connections here and there. I said, okay, girl, help your home girl out. And she was like, yes, I am. I said, all right, that's what you're supposed to do. You know, and you know, she goes down there and she finally tells him about the Fair Street project and what she want to do, renovating certain buildings and stuff like that. And he's giving her all the information that she's needing and basically giving her hope, giving her hope that all of this will get done. Okay. And so that was a good look. And, you know, after the meeting, the meeting went well enough for the fact that Letitia was out there crying because she's thinking about her grandfather who probably, I think he was a part of the Fair Street, you know, when it was booming at one point, you know, he grew up back then. And so, you know, thinking about if he was there because she did lo uh, lose her grandfather like a couple of months prior, that he would be very, very proud of her. And so I felt her in that moment because we all just want to make our parents and our family proud. And that's what she's doing. And I feel like, like I said, all, every episode, that project, I'm really here for her trying to get it off the ground. And I really do hope that they get it off the ground. Now, let's get back to the mess. Okay, first of all, Latricia... Latricia. Who was Latricia on herself? Latrice. Okay. And her publicist, Melody. Melanie. Shout out to Melanie because Melody found me on um she found me on Twitter. Okay. And mama looked at the reviews and she liked it. So, you know, 
Hey girl, hey, how you doing? Thank you for watching. Um, you know, you cute or whatever. Anyway, so Melody the publicist, they up there sitting down having a little impromptu lunch or whatever, a little impromptu business meeting, talking about, you know, goddess lengths and talking about the oils and sensual oils or whatever it's called, you know, another product that Latrice is trying to get out there on the market and she wants it to be nationwide. Understandable. That's what everybody wants their project uh products to do. You know what I'm saying? Do be. Girl, they in the midst of doing this conversation about business. And Ziddy, or I should say Zaddy, a.k.a. Cliff calls, okay? He pissed because he want to know where she at. Where's Latrice? Latrice, where you at? I said, damn, so you clocking her every move? Mama can't go have lunch with Melanie, the goddamn publicist? You know her, I'm pretty sure. You know she ain't finna put the girl in no compromising positions and shit like that. What is going on, Cliff? Cliff, you making me uneasy, okay? Because you giving me controlling tease. And, you know, he said he felt some type of way because he wasn't included, okay? This motherfucker felt some type of way so bad that he jumped up and he popped up on their ass. I said he popped up like, I'm here. And I said, um, excuse me. Now, see, I can't be in a relationship like that. Now, even in my relationship, I would be the dominant one. You know what I'm saying? I'm the dominant one. And that dominant don't automatically mean controlling, okay? And somebody literally asked me, do I like my women to be aggressive or submissive? Baby, I like a little bit of both, okay? I want a mixture. You know, I don't want nobody that I can run all over and rule all over and all this shit. Bitch, no, okay? That's no fun, you know? Challenge my ass. Put my ass in my place every time or two, you know? A time or two, you know what I'm saying? But Cliff, baby, he was doing the most, okay? He talking about something. If I'm investing in it, I want to know where my money going and I need to be this and put my input in. You need to use my logo and you need to do this. I'm the VP. I said, uh-uh, baby, be a silent investor. See, this is why I don't work with family and sometimes you can't work with friends, okay? Because they want to put too much input in and business just get a little bit messy in the line, get blurred and everything. I said, bitch, is it Latrice business or is it yours? Now, granted, I know you put a little bit of change up in there. But who business is it? Latrice, let your wife do what she got to do. Meanwhile, Latrice out there seen Cliff in the pool, okay? Well, he was standing next to the pool. She come out there, hey, Ziggy, how you doing? Or whatever. And was like, you going to get up in the pool? She was like, no, I ain't finna get up in the pool. He said, bitch, I made this pool five feet just for you, okay? Just for you. She was like, that's fine. That's fine, but I'm not finna get this hair wet. I'm not finna get this body wet. Bitch, if it ain't a tub, um, Latrice ain't getting into it. Latrice had a traumatic experience, which I understand, okay? Because I was about to say, bitch, it is 2019 or whenever they filmed this, and you mean to tell me you're going to be one of those black folks that don't know how to swim? She was like, yes, I am. Because my brother threw me up in the pool and I damn near drowned. And I said, okay, I'll give you that. All right, you got an excuse. So I'm going to let you pass, okay? Because I was about to go in a little bit. Bitch, what? You better get some, you better doggy paddle up in that bitch. You know what I'm saying? So next thing you know, they sitting there talking. She, he was like, I'm finna get in the pool. Go ahead and get in the pool, Ziddy. Ziddy, show me them muscles, bitch. Show me them muscles, Ziddy. I'm sitting here like, oh, Cliff probably got a body underneath there. He probably do got an old man muscle type body. You know what I'm saying? Cliff pulled his shirt up and it was a gut. And I said, you know what? I can get it. I can understand it. You know, Latrice was going all off. I was like, Latrice, you know, I kind of sat at her for a second. I was like, now, do you really like that? Or is it because of what he can do for you? She said, no, bitch. I'm a Southern bitch, okay? I'm an old school bitch, and I love that belly. I said, I know that's fucking right. Love your man, bitch. That means he gonna love her. Hopefully, you better, it better be reciprocated. Because you know what? Women can accept men for how the fuck they look, but they can't accept the um, women for how they look and how they get their bodies get when they get older or whatever. And it ain't all the way intact. You know what I'm saying? When they get older and shit start to sag and a little pudge get here or whatever. Cliff, you better appreciate the fuck out of her. Okay? That's what you better do because she came up there and she jiggled your belly. Like that lady be laying on your belly. I can tell. I can tell. Okay? But anyway, when she got up in that pool... Somehow he convinced her ass to get up in that pool and she said, let me put this, this how we do it. The black girl store, she got a double plastic bag that you get from the store and she wrapped her hair up and put it up in there. I said, bitch, you ain't got no swim caps. 
I said, bitch, I ain't seen nobody do that shit in a long time. I said, the ghetto, okay? She said, bitch, I came from nothing. That don't mean that I got to leave everything that I learned back in the past in the past, okay? I got to bring some of that shit with me. And this is one of those things. I said, I know that's right, okay? He was trying to teach her how to swim. She said, bitch, the way that he be teaching people, uh, telling it's like he telling you this, and, and it's just fucked up. Girl, a mess, a mess. I said, you gonna make that man pass out. First of all, the water wasn't deep enough where they were standing at, and he bent all over and all this shit. I said, he gonna, pop, he gonna fall. He gonna stroke out trying to help your ass. I said, this is a mess. Moving on, it was cute, though. It was cute, though. It was one of the things that I actually liked between Cliff and Latrice. But moving on from that, Let's just get to the main shit of this episode. Marie, bitch. So we see exactly why Marie is such a bitch to everybody else. Because Marie, you know, she want to act like she got control of her household. She don't have control of that household. She don't have control of the household because of the shit that is going on in her house that she's allowing to go on in her house, Okay. And that's why she's taking it out. You're taking your anger. You're taking your frustration out on other people that you don't even fucking know. Okay? That's what it seems like. You know what I'm saying? You want to... I just don't understand people that want to go around and be pissed off all the time. Just because your home life fucked up, don't put it on nobody else. But that's basically what I'm getting from Latrice. I mean, um, from um, Marie. But Marie is taking care of her oldest son, who is off at college... Uh, kids. Mind you, she was watching. He got three kids that's under the age of one. So you mean to tell me you fuck one bitch and you fuck the next bitch and you fuck the next bitch all raw, okay, within probably a month or a couple of weeks span. And you did not actually put on a condom. You did not think to put on a condom. And all them kids came like a month or two after each other. That's fucked up for one, okay? And then you're not around to be there to be a father to your kids at this point. That's fucked up, number two. And then, on top of that, she's taking care of her, um, <clears throat> she got four kids all together. And he's one of them, Jerez, the oldest. Then you got the three grandkids. Then you got at least two of their baby mamas that she look out for. At least one baby mama, I think, that she look out for, for real, for real. And she came over there talking about math classes and Jarrell stand with me. And, you know, the other baby mama talking about some, you know, I be calling him. So I just call you because I know um you going to ask her first and all this shit. Now, see, you're stressed out and then your husband ain't shit. First of all, she got upset. At, she felt the way about the little baby having earrings in his ear. I understand, okay? That's a grandma the trait or whatever you don't want the baby to have earrings in his ears too young or nothing, whatever but at the end of the day that ain't your child you just a grandparent okay so if the mama want to put the earrings up in the baby ear that's her doing we don't want no drama and no contentions to happen between y'all so leave that fucking shit alone okay then you got the daddy Cedric, okay, her husband that she was married to got divorced and got married back again with He's sitting there, and I don't know, he got one of those faces, like, he looked like a particular actor that I cannot put my name, like, I don't know his name, but I can see his face, and he looks just like him, okay? I was like, nigga look familiar as fuck, but anyway, she having issues with her son, okay? She's also having issues with her husband. Now, the issue with her son is... He's not taking care of his responsibilities. And let me tell you something, Marie. You got me all the way fucked up because, bitch, it wouldn't be me. I don't care what is going on. It would not be me. Jerez, you laid down and you had all three of them kids. You know, you helped make all three of them kids. You'll be the one that's be responsible for them. I'm just a grandmother, okay? That ain't my kids. I'm not supposed to be providing everything for them and doing what you're supposed to be doing for them. No, not me, you. He would have been put out on his own. He would have had to find a, find a way. Because at this point, he's taking advantage of the fact that you are willing to do for him that he, what he's not willing to do for himself. He sees a weak point in you, Marie, and therefore he's playing on it. And he knows that you're not going to, he's playing on that motherly aspect that you have, that you're not going to let these kids suffer and struggle so therefore he knows that you're going to pick up his slack and that's why he's doing what he's doing because you have yet to put your foot down he's 21 or damn near yeah he needs to get out there and do his own goddamn thing if he's not going to follow the rules and be a fucking man and a father to his kids okay and then 
you get into it with your mama because she went over there to Letitia house and did the little crying shit because she recorded a conversation that she had with him. You know, he had basically hit the wall behind her, rose up on her because, you know, he came there and he, um, she found out that he went, to, he chose to go to a school that wasn't close to the house. And the only reason why she really wanted him to be, pick a school that was closer to the house was so that she can still be there for his kids, which is understandable, okay? And I understand that you want to be your own man and you want to make your own decision. But once you had those kids, whatever you want, especially them being so young, whatever it is that you want, that's out the fucking window. It's what's the, in the best interest of those kids, okay? That's what comes first, those kids, all right? It's a lot of single parents that's out there that go into college that take care of their kids and they can, can focus on their studies. But see, you fucked up and had three. Three at once, okay? That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So you messed up. You messed up. And you have to rectify the situation. And, and, and you're just taking advantage. And because your mom get pissed off that you picked the school three hours away from your kids so that you can, you basically run away from your responsibilities. And you did that shit on purpose, okay? Granted, and if she paying for the fucking tuition and shit like that, hell the fuck yeah, she should be pissed off, okay? But you gonna run up on your mama because she see you taking a TV that 9 out of 10 she brought, okay? And then you gonna get pissed off at her talking about get off that lame shit, nigga, get off that lame shit. You want some bullshit in her house that she paying for? Probably paying for the clothes that you wearing? Everything that's up in that room and you gonna run up on her like she a nigga and a stranger off the street and then you gonna hit the fucking wall behind her? Bitch, you got me fucked up. It wouldn't be no fucking talking. All your shit would be out on the goddamn street and we would never have any kind of conversation ever a fucking again, okay? Or at least for a minute. At least for a minute. Now, she loves you because she she spoke to you quicker than I would have. All right, I would have let your ass suffer because the day you raise your hand to me is the day that your ass get the fuck out, okay? And the day that's our all connection and all money, all financial and all that stability is over and fucking done with. And see, once again, he played on her sweet spot knowing that she wasn't going to cut them off because that means cutting off the kids. So, therefore, he's going to still be there, okay? She can say in this little meeting that she going to still be there or whatever, not for him, but for the kids. That's a lie because she's still going to be taking care of that nigga ass, okay? And then, when she sit down and they was finna have this sit down and she said she finna bring over a mediator, Essie, the uh, business partner, Bitch, Cedric got pissed off, okay? She said, first of all, I didn't even know that you was going to be here because you didn't come home last night. He got a, his, she said he got his own separate place, okay? Now, when they was together or doing whatever they was doing or whatever, she had her place, he had his place. He never got rid of his place, okay? And so, he was at his spot. I said, wrong fucking room. That is wrong. What the fuck? If we are married, why do you have a separate spot? And then you didn't come home the other night or whatever, bitch. He cheating, okay? You already got the cheating allegations and all this stuff against you already. The infidelities on you. And you still out here doing that shit and getting upset with Essie being there. And um, even though it seemed like Essie and um, Marie could be little fucking, but it is what it is. You know, Essie said, it's my business because whatever's hers, I, whatever she got, I got half of it. Because they in business together, okay? And she, Essie told him, right. Bitch, he ain't got a consistent male figure in the house, and you ain't being the man that he fucking need. So, bitch, I'm about to be. I said, damn, Essie, that's how she came off. Like, I'm about to be that nigga. <laughs> I'll be the pappy. That's how she came off. I was like, and he just let her speak to him like that, because obviously it was the truth. And then when Jerez brought his ass up in there, you know, Marie feeling all sad and fucked up. And, and telling him how much you hurt her and whatever to hear you say that because they never had a conversation like that before. It never escalated that way before. I'm sitting here like, you need to get that boy help because he has anger management problem. And ain't no telling if or when he will snap on somebody else, another woman, and actually hit them. Okay? And then his ass would be locked the fuck up. Meanwhile, after they had a little conversation, you know... Um, the dad, Cedric, well, um, yeah, bro, I appreciate the fact that you came over here and apologized and, you know, you said the shit that you said. I said, nigga, shut up. Shut up. Like, just, you just sit there and you just be quiet, okay? This, why are you here? Why are you here? Something about Cedric seems like he's a little touched, okay? But anyway, Marie, you have to clean up your house. 
You have to come. Yes, you got this million dollar, multi dollar, million business that's going off or whatever. You a motherfucking boss, but your home ain't clean. Okay? Fix that before you start coming for other people. You don't want people to look at you like a bully. Fix your home first. Fix your attitude. And then you'll be all fuck the good. Okay? But that was Bell Collective. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. And I will see you guys later. Peace.